Now, on the last day of Breast Cancer Awareness Month, we bring you the story of Wende Mutiso, a 27-year-old battling stage 4 breast cancer. We linked up with her to get a sense of what a typical treatment day was like. Her journey, like many other cancer patients, extends well beyond the 31 days we talk, tweet and don the pink ribbons or walk to raise awareness about breast cancer. Though Wende is in her second bout with breast cancer, she is certain she will beat it again. Mwende is just pulling up at the Aga Khan Hospital in Nairobi. It's a chilly morning, but she's prepared for more than just the weather. <laughs> Hi, how are you? Good. It's treatment day, which means it's going to be a long one. But Mwende has her sister Rebecca along for support on the queues and eventually in her treatment session. Because I need to first come to the... Um, her first stop is the lab to get results from yesterday's clinic day when they checked her vitals. Every three weeks, Mwende needs to have at least 100,000 shillings to pay for her lab work, medication and hormonal treatment. It's been a four-year journey battling breast cancer, and now in her second round, she's fighting a stage four diagnosis. She was first diagnosed in 2016 at the age of 23. It was stage zero breast cancer, ductal carcinoma in situ. Mwende decided to have a mastectomy and was declared cancer-free. You still have to click me. This lasted for three years until... I noticed that on my neck, I had a small nodule. One of my lymph nodes was slightly swollen. So I decided to come again to the hospital. I came, they checked, I, I did a, a series of tests, and then the results came back And I was, around November last year, and I was told that the cancer was back. I was really afraid, but I wanted to see an, a doctor immediately. Another doctor was um, recommended. So when I went to the doctor and asked her what my prognosis is, yes. she told me that I had one year to live. This was 9th December. I remember because the following day was my birthday. Mwende is the last born of five in her family and the only to pursue a higher education. Earning her university degree is a goal she so badly wants to achieve, but now has to set aside her fees for her treatment. I had just uh, resumed school again, so I felt like my life again has been flipped upside down because I had just started uh, moving forward. Another dream Mwende soon found out would be stolen. If I was going to go do um, this treatment, the treatment, that meant that um, I wouldn't be able to get children. Mm. So again, you know, it was another blow. Because <laughs> I, I was just thinking, you know, I, it's not like I want children right now, but I wanted to have that option. Other cancer patients take the option of freezing their eggs or using a surrogate. But for Mwende, those are alternatives that are far beyond her financial reach. Oh, that's nice. This is over there. Yeah, so I'm the second one. On Managing the... a stage four breast cancer diagnosis at 27 years old is rare, bearing in mind that breast cancer screening starts when women turn 40. So how have you been since the last time? So I've been good. Okay. However, Mwende's physician, Dr. Sitna Mwanzi, says she's beginning to see younger women present with symptoms. We have a, a few patients in that um, age range, so it's not for us it's not unusual. They're not going to be the majority of patients. In fact, I think a study from Kenyatta showed that our median age is 47. For most women in Mwende's age group, they can easily miss or ignore the signs, which is why Dr. Mwanzi insists on younger women still self-examining and going for a biopsy if needed. One of the things we don't um, take seriously in, in Kenya is genetic testing. Um, so I think like for these younger women, then doing genetic testing becomes more um, relevant in, in the sense that 
um, the younger you are, the more likely that there's a genetic uh, problem predisposing the patient to the cancer, even if there is no family history of cancer. In Wende's case, she is the only member of her family to be diagnosed with cancer. But one thing she learned early on proved to be her saving grace. When I was still in high school, I had joined this organization called Resource Center for Women and Girls, which is a uh, program for empowering young girls. And that is when I learned how to do self-examination. So that is just the background. And I had been doing this, I think I first went to a medical camp in 2012. So I had been just doing the uh, examinations. Like this. This routine is certainly what helped Mwende catch it early the first time and now in her second round battling the disease. Now with uh, her cancer that has spread to um, the lymph nodes and in the lung and um, so for her this is now like a more long-term uh, journey of uh, treatment and she has a type of cancer that we call triple positive breast cancer and I'm just saying that to highlight that um, Many times we think of breast cancer as one disease, whereas it's actually uh, many, it's many different types of um, um, disease. Um, and so for her, her treatment is targeted to the estrogen receptor, the progesterone receptor, and the HER2 receptor, which, is, which are all positive for her. Mwende's last round of chemotherapy, which took place between December last year and April this year, produced some promising results. When I did the, um, the checkups to check if the treatment was working, they saw that you know the lymph nodes which were here, there was no evidence of cancer, neither on the mastectomy scar, and the noodle which was in my lung was um, significantly shrunk, had significantly shrunk. So yeah, that was great news. <laughs> Every three weeks, this treatment room at Aga Khan Hospital hosts Mwende and other patients for a couple of hours. Her sister Rebecca, a single mom of two, comes for most sessions to help pass the time. Mostly I read, because most of the time she's sleeping the whole time. Because in the next like 30 minutes, she'll be out. <laughs> So after that, she wakes up, she eats something. When she wants something that is not in the hospital, I go outside and buy it. I bring it to her. <laughs> I've learned I can be very patient. <laughs> very patient <laughs> and supportive. Uh, I, never, I never knew I can be this strong. But she's strong, so she's taught me how to be strong. Mwende has come a long way in accepting her condition, choosing to no longer be defined by it. No one knew that I had breast cancer before, so I was not telling anybody. Mm. But I came and started you know, sharing my story. And the more I shared my story, the more empowered I would feel and the more I would accept myself. You know, so I started feeling, you know, being more... Um, you know, w loving myself. Yeah. I'll say I'll, I started loving myself again because I remember even sometimes I will go to the shop without a prosthesis. No. And then when I fo saw somebody staring, I'll be like, oh, I forgot my breasts, you know, <laughs> at home. So I started, you know, I was not hiding as I used to. He owes me an ice cream. Very well. <laughs> She's able to find the humor in a dire situation that happens to be occurring in the middle of a global pandemic. Working from home, Mwende says, has been her normal since December last year when she started her chemo treatment. So when the pandemic hit, transitioning to life at home wasn't difficult. In the morning, yes. But Mwende is in the high-risk group for COVID-19 as someone with a pre-existing condition and one that affects her lungs. Her focus, though, has been keeping positive despite the realities of being a cancer patient. Her session is complete three hours later. I'm feeling quite tired, so most probably what I'm going to do when I get home is sleep. <laughs> and I'm also hungry, I'm not sure why. Yeah, so. <laughs> but one thing Wendy knows for sure. Oh, I think I've already beaten it. 
yeah so i'm just you know taking some cocktails here and there but yeah definitely i think i'm going i'm going to beat this victoria rubadiri citizen tv